So you're thinking about getting a Tesla, but you don't have access to the fast charging at 220 at home. Is it possible to charge your Tesla at home successfully on 110? There's a few do's and don'ts and things I've learned along the way I'm gonna share with you guys. Stay tuned, I'm gonna get to those in a second. What's up everybody, Andre, Andre Reese.biz. All right guys, not only do I do taxes and uh, accounting bookkeeping, I do a whole bunch of other stuff. All right guys, so what I'm gonna talk to you guys today about is uh, charging your Tesla. So a lot of people right now, Tesla's probably one of the most popular electric vehicles on the planet right now. And a lot of people are thinking about getting Teslas, they're coming down in price. We're even talking about coming out with a new Tesla soon. That's gonna be about $25,000. So, Tesla has never really intended for anybody to use the superchargers as their record ongoing uh, source of power to charge their car. It actually damages your battery over time. They consider your your uh, your primary source of charging your vehicle is going to be at home in your garage. Now, a lot of people like don't have access to 220, which is going to be the faster charge that you're going to be able to get in your garage at home. A lot of people only have access to 110. So is it even worth it trying to uh, you know, get a Tesla and charge your car on uh, 110 you know, current? And I would say yes. You know, And there's a few things that I've learned along the way. To, to make a long story short, I actually came up uh, last year on a Tesla charger, a 110. And I sat on it for a while and I finally eventually went ahead and installed it and uh, began to use it, you know, charging a Tesla here in my garage, you know. And so I'm going to kind of tell you guys what I learned along the way. You know, so of course, when you get the, your Tesla charger, your 110 charger, you got to find a place to, to charge it. And so kind of what I did is I'll just, go, I'll just go ahead and show you guys what my whole setup is right now. What I ultimately ended up doing was in my garage here, you can see up on top, I've got a garage door opener. I ultimately ended up using this particular outlet up there to use for charging the Tesla. I've got a heavy duty uh, cable here that's a 15 amp that's um, you know used to run the current, and I'll explain about that in a second. Then I run that across here, and then I bring it down to where I have you know the Tesla charger set up right there. You know, and so kind of explain to you guys what I did initially when I first uh, started using the Tesla charger, I would just use this regular GFI outlet right here. What was happening is this actually is connected to all the GF outlets in the house. You know, so upstairs in the kitchen, you know, some of the bathrooms, et cetera, they all run on the same circuit. I was always constantly getting the uh, the charger or the, uh, the, um, the outlet here was always tripping. So I wasn't able to get a stable uh, charge, you know, all the time. And so what I found is that, um, this particular thing is when a Tesla is actually charging, it runs generally roughly about 12 amps all the time, you know? And so two things will happen. If your GFI has other things on it, it's going to get warm. It's going to get hot. It's going to end up tripping all the time, which is what it did. You know, I'll tell you, it was very, very frustrating. And then, so at one point, what I ended up doing was, um, I ended up deciding, well, maybe I can try to see if I can run it upstairs where the washing machine and dryer is, but I was like, you know, leave it alone. And then I ultimately started thinking, was there another outlet out here in the garage? And there's not many. So the only other outlet that I had was the one up here for the garage door. And so this particular one here is not connected to a GFI. It runs all the way to the, uh, to the, the, the power box, which is, you know, at 15 amps. So it's definitely underneath, you know, the, uh, the limit, which would cause it, you know, to trip, you know, at 15 amps, this runs at 12 amps, and then the garage door doesn't take you know, very much when it's running and when it's not running, you know, so, and so what I found is uh, by these things being only on the same circuit, you know, nothing else is on them at all, just the garage door and it runs up to the box. I can run the Tesla charger um, all and the, charge the Tesla all the time and there's no problems with it tripping. So that was like the first thing that I ended up solving. So the next thing was trying to run, you know, the cable as I was testing from there over to where the Tesla would actually charge it. So I used a couple of different cables. At first I used one of these here. These are just, it's just a standard outdoor cable that you would find, you know, to run the Christmas trees. I'll tell you, this thing would get really, really, really hot, really warm. So I, I said, okay, well, let me go ahead and opt for a, a, a heavier duty type of uh, cord here. This thing has a built-in surge protector that jumps on at about 11.5 amps. 
you know, so once it's been exceeded, it starts to go ahead and uh, trip. And so what ended up happening was when I was using this, that didn't help the problem at all either. So ultimately in the end, what I ended up doing was I ended up going on Amazon and I ended up buying a commercial or outdoor um, heavy duty plug. And so uh, this particular plug here runs at 15 amps. So it'll take all the current that's coming out of the outlet on the back and bring it over here without causing the, the cord to heat up. You know, so it's, it, it'll definitely take the higher amount of current. So once I went ahead and got that particular problem solved and you plug it into the Tesla, there was no problems at all with the car shutting off or with the, uh, with the circuit breakers kicking in. You know, so in the end, you know, what you ultimately have to do is you have to, if you're able to come up on one of these Tesla chargers, you know, that are 110, great. You just need to, the only other issue you're gonna have to deal with is you're gonna try to find an outlet in your garage that is not GFI that runs directly to the box. And, and for whatever reason, the way it's set up here in my garage here is this particular outlet runs straight up to the, 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 the box upstairs and uh, there's not really anything else that's on it, you know, so there's very little current that's being drawn. So now that I have that set up with the uh, wiring all ran over to here, I can plug a Tesla in and I can charge it and it stays stable. I can have it plugged in for weeks at a time and then there's never any problems at all with, um, with, with the Tesla, you know, constantly tripping and setting off the, uh, the circuit breaker. Now, the only other thing you gotta really deal with is that when you're dealing with a 110, it's a slow charge, you know, so you're only gonna get roughly about four miles per hour. And I'll tell you, if you don't drive a lot in a 24 hour period of time, you're gonna get roughly about 100 miles of charge. So you figure in two days, you can actually get roughly about uh, 200 miles worth of charge running off of a 110. So if you drive a lot, you're a road warrior, you're gonna have to compensate by having you know, a much, much bigger battery on your Tesla that has greater range. So if you have one of the ones that get 350, 400 miles, you know you, know you can at least charge at home for and get 100 miles added back on. And if you don't drive a lot, typically um, having it plugged into 110 all the time at home, charging at four miles per hour is more than sufficient. And you figure in, in about a week's time of being plugged in, you know, you're gonna get roughly about 700 miles worth of charge on your uh, Tesla. So that actually works out to be pretty good. So in the end guys, uh, those are the only things that you probably wanna definitely consider is making sure that you have a, uh, an outlet. And, and I'll tell you, once you get going and figure out what's happening, if you're doing something wrong, the circuit breakers will kick in and they'll let you know you'll need to move the stuff. But this will definitely save you a little bit of trial and error. And I think probably over a period of about two weeks, it took me to kind of figure out how to have a stable source of charging at a 110 that didn't kick on and off all the time. So now, like I said, whenever a Tesla is here and it's being charged, it charges roughly about four miles uh, per hour, roughly almost uh, 100 miles in a day, 700 miles in a week. And then typically that's more than enough for the average driver, especially now that everybody's kind of at home on shelter in place. You know, um, a lot of people are working from home. You know, I think overall, you're gonna be able to get a great experience without having to invest a lot of money in a 220 charger, you know, because you'll be able to do it home basically by using that 110 if you don't drive a lot. So that's it guys. Uh, I don't have anything else to add here. You know, if, like I said, if you guys are considering getting a Tesla at some point in the future, you know, charging it on 110 may not be that bad. You know, you, it's not gonna cost you a lot for the infrastructure. If you, and they're gonna have so many Tesla chargers around now that if you need to go to a supercharger, you know, to get a, a quick boost because you're gonna go on a long trip, that's always available as well. You know, but other than that, guys, uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video, got something out of it. Hopefully it's gonna answer some questions for you. Please take a moment to uh, like this video and also take uh, a moment to subscribe to my channel if you guys haven't done that already. If you ever have any questions at all, feel free to hit me down in the comments below. And I hope you guys have a, a great time. Take care, guys, and uh, happy Tesla charge. <laughs> Guys, thanks for sticking with me all the way to the end of this video. Visit me directly at andrereese.biz. Four things to do, like, follow, subscribe, hit that bell. Stay safe, guys. Lift the glass to freedom. Stay woke and don't get TikTok. Take care. I will see you guys in the next video.